All right. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. I uh, really want to thank Joe and Frida from Spirit X and the Chainlink community for, for joining us. Uh, really excited to have Joe Yu, the top researcher, uh, and Frida Kai, the global strategic partner of Spirit X. Uh, the goal of this Q&A is to talk with the community, explore a little bit more about what Spirit X is working on, as well as what makes this integration unique and beneficial to both teams. Uh, a little bit about the agenda. Uh, it'll last about 20 to 30 minutes Q&A structure. If you have questions, feel free to drop them into the YouTube chat. I'll also drop both of our community channels. And if you have questions afterwards, we'll do our best to try to get to all of them and, and answer any questions that you have. Um, we'll also add any links into the description of the YouTube video. It'll take a few hours for that to propagate and get in there. Uh, and then you can do your own research as well afterwards. So without further ado, again, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, Frida and Joe, Joe for joining. Thank you for the introduction, Tina, and thank you a lot. This is really exciting for us. Yeah, yeah, no, we're really excited to learn more about, about Spirit X. And uh, yeah, if you want to maybe just give a little introduction about yourself and maybe a little bit about Spirit X. Sure, um, let me start. I, uh, my name is Frida. I uh, just graduated fresh from Clinton University Journalism School with a Master of Science degree in Data Journalism. And I uh, first came to the States to, in 2013 for an undergrad in University of Virginia. And I hold a bachelor's degree in Foreign Affairs and History minor. And I have an extensive ex past experience in reporting the latest technology trends in Asia. And I have been mesmerized by the potential of crypto and blockchain industries ever since, and just decided to devote my early career or hopefully a long-term career into the space. And that's all. Okay, I can do next. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, I'm now a senior undergrad in UCLA. Uh, I'm studying math of computation. Uh, which basically is like mathematical side of computer science. And also I'm pursuing a philosophy, main, uh, a philosophy minor, uh, which is not quite related to today's topic anyway. Uh, and uh, I uh, joined Sparex uh, since last June as uh, a research assistant to uh, Professor Wang, uh, who is a uh, big deal in cryptography. And also he is the uh, like academic guy uh, here in Sparex. And uh, now I'm a researcher, a former researcher uh, in SpareX. Uh, my job is basically first uh, to uh, do our te uh, test net right, uh, right, right now to implement our uh, consensus uh, protocol. And also I, my job, another side is to analyze uh, current like project, blockchain project, DeFi project to see like where uh, our uh, project can improve on. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Frida, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about Spirit X and uh, what what it is? Yeah, sure. So um, we were founded in 2018 in Menlo Park, California. And uh, the reason we found it is that we saw like, the severe lack of user friendliness in the blockchain enabled decentralized financial applications, as well as, as this tremendous disconnection between the traditional financial industry and the cryptocurrency world. So we believe that a scalable blockchain application should not require end users to directly interact with blockchain itself while enjoying the benefit of the underlying technology. So we see this pain point and we want to overturn it. And in a short term is that we want to make decentralized financial services accessible to all and built with our original blockchain design, which is called BDLS Consensus Protocol. We offer a high performance blockchain that is truly secure in the real internet environment compared to other, I would say top ranking uh, BFT based blockchains such as Cosmos, um, Polkadot Grandpa and Ethereum Casper FFG. And on top of our blockchain consensus infrastructure, our foundation issued this native multi-currency stable coin S-Coin, which is the first among public blockchain ecosystems. And this S-Coin will bridge the gap between internet users and crypto native applications. Because in Spiras, we believe that more people deserve to enjoy the benefits of blockchain enabled decentralized financial applications. So uh, a more background regarding our uh, fundraising history is that in January 2020, we secured over 6 million US dollars in seed funding rounds. And, uh, sorry about that. And uh, with leading investors, including Outlier Ventures, 
um, FBG Capital and New Style Capital. And this year in March, we launched our first public sale in Kobak, which is the largest crypto community, uh, cryptocurrency community in South Korea with a 200,000 USD allocation sold out in less than 20 minutes. And um, that is a very general review of our, uh, our project, but I hope that will give like enough intro to the audience. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, and I think you kind of touched on it. Do you want to kind of go into what your motivations were starting this project and, and kind of what has inspired you? Uh, maybe uh, Frida, maybe you are like more familiar with the marketing side. Yeah, do you yes, want to introduce sure. a bit? Yeah. So, so I mentioned about this lack of user friendliness, and we noticed that crypto is not designed for the mass consumer group uh, groups. The complexity, uh, the complexity in setting up wallets and accounts, um, the constant fluctuations in the market, the crypto without a real cryptocurrency, without a real currency features, all made this impossible for people to actually adopt crypto, let alone talking about kill, creating killer apps. So due to this um, lack of financial infrastructure, the current design principle of public blockchain is more like to create a prepaid S, uh, SES, SES model, rather than an economy that runs on smart contracts. Um, so more, moreover is that People find it impossible to balance security and high performance. Um, proof of work system sacrifice performance for security. Proof of score, proof of stake consensus have security flaws in, pro, um, in protocol design because most BFT protocols are not secure under asynchronous um, networks. So our design principle is to achieve security and efficiency at the same time. We believe that security is the most important feature of the public blockchain compared to a centralized solution. Meantime, we continue to improve on the performance on our protocol. Algorithmically, the current consensus that we're using is the most efficient among BFT-based consensus. So with that, we can connect a decentralized economy with real-world finance through partnership with um, regulated financial services operators and payment integrators, application built on SparaX could be offered to end users without interacting with the blockchain directly. So they will create more possibilities for application developers to offer the best use cases to consumers. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, thank, thanks for sharing. Joe, uh, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about what, what you're researching specifically on a, on a technical level with SparaX and maybe what makes SparaX special? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm mainly working on the BDL as consensus protocol, as mentioned by Frida. So basically, our like I think uh, we have two main features. One is security. One is performance or efficiency. Like people usually think they are like two like opposite things. Like when you have efficiency, you have to sacrifice security. When you uh, have security, you don't have a high uh, scalability or performance. But uh, that's not true. Uh, actually. Uh, we achieve both at the same time. So we have a quite good balance here. Uh, so like our professor, uh, like he, he initiated this uh, SpareX pro uh, project because he when he uh, like back in 2018, when he uh, is still just a professor, <laughs> he uh, analyzed many uh, blockchain pro uh, project and say, can we do better? And his answer is yes, we can. So. Uh, he uh, and he's working like his specialization is on what we call a, a partially asynchronous uh, network model. So, like our internet is not always synchronous, as uh, we can all see nowadays during the pandemic, our connection is not that smooth, uh, like all the time, right? Uh, but that's a very intuitive, uh, like uh, notion. Uh, like the a more academic term is much more. Um, rigorous, uh, uh, of course, right? So, uh, so our uh, internet is best modeled by what we call a partially uh, asynchronous network model. And like previously blockchains are all like designed on uh, a synchronous model. It's much simpler and people can uh, have more space when they design their uh, consensus protocol, but uh, it will also have some uh, setbacks. Like you have to ignore uh, because the model is simpler. So you have to ignore some uh, pretty significant uh, security issues. So, uh, but when you try to design on a more realistic model, like a partially uh, asynchronous uh, network model, you have to uh, like do more challenging, more challenging jobs. Uh, so, like because our professor is like he's a cryptographer, uh, he's pretty like uh, 
familiar with doing challenging jobs <laughs> and I'm very like lucky to be like his uh, research assistant and I learned a lot from him of course and uh, so we uh, try our best I we do um, uh, like so much uh, research jobs and we uh, finally come up with uh, what we now have uh, BBLS consensus protocol uh, because it is based on this uh, very challenging uh, partially asynchronous uh, network model so uh, it has like it uh, like he it can take care of many uh, potential uh, like vulnerability like other uh, protocol may have to ignore because they don't have the realistic model. Uh, one of them is called liveness property. Like for uh, security of a blockchain uh, system, there are two like uh, most important property you have to maintain. One is called liveness. Uh, basically, means like when you have a valid transaction in the blockchain. Will it be like in to like be included in a block uh, within a reasonable uh, amount of time? And the second one is called safety, uh, and it's like basically about like how how difficult a malicious group can make it fork uh, in a blockchain. Uh, so like the most uh, uh, the like people when they use a simpler model, uh, like say synchronous uh, network model, they usually will. E ignore many uh, potential risks in lightness property. So uh, basically we analyze many uh, like current uh, blockchain consensus protocols and they can all be like easily led to a deadlock when they are under asynchronous uh, network, par uh, partially asynchronous network to be uh, uh, rigorous. Uh, so, uh, and we uh, see this point and say, well, this is really a big problem if you don't like if you can include a valid transaction like in a certain amount of time like i made a transaction but it takes like 10 years to be get on the blockchain then what's like what what's the purpose right uh, so um yeah so uh this is how we improve on our security and and we and we think uh do we need to stop here or we need to go further um and our answer is yes, absolutely. We need to go further. We can only have security. We only we have to also have performance, right? Because in a uh, partially asynchronous network, like uh, things are getting complicated, and you like have more back and forth, uh, like communication messages. And like in cryptography, there are like two main uh, concerns of like the designers. One is uh, called communication. One is computation. So first is like. Uh, co uh, communication that like when you send message back and forth uh, when you have too many rounds uh, it takes a long time and uh, another one is computation which is how many like computational work you have to do on your local node uh, if there is too much maybe a normal uh, pc can't handle then our blockchain just defeats itself right uh, and uh, we mainly focus on the communication side because we find like computation is not such a big problem in our protocol. And uh, we finally managed to uh, significantly reduce the communication complexity. That's a pretty academic term, <laughs> uh, communication complexity. Uh, so basically like uh, when you uh, have a input, say the size is N, uh, like usually the protocol needs like n square uh, complexity to complete this job. So like you have to square your task, which is a very big problem when your task is huge, right? You have to square that huge task. Uh, and I, we find the best, like the most efficient uh, protocol uh, have to do like in seven n com uh, complexity, which is like seven times the task. Uh, which is not bad compared to these uh, uh, n squared one, but uh, we are thinking maybe we can improve on this. Uh, so finally, we uh, managed to get to four n, which is only like half, kind of like nearly half of the workload, uh, communication workload compared to the best one so far. So both security and efficiency we achieve in the like a realistic model. Uh, so we are pretty excited about it. <laughs> Yeah, no, th this is very, very exciting. And it's great to see, you know, so many academics on your team and just in general in cryptography that are working on solving these these challenges from and I think this can go to Frida or, or you, Joe, what, what use cases are you most excited about with with Spira X and with this technology? Where do you kind of see it flourishing? 
Um, I'll take this one. Um, the most we had three major use cases that we're mostly proud of. Is um, one is the one that's backed by Xiaomi, which is one of the leading technology um, brands in I would say in Asia and all around the world. Um, it, one of the virtual and financial virtual bank backed by Xiaomi, which has the full license authorized the Hong Kong Monetary Authority proposal. Um, they proposed Sprex a stablecoin for the following use cases like use the fiat gateway and accept cash equivalent, and also support cross-border transactions based on the stablecoin network and offer more competitive rates. And the second one is a Sand Hill Road-based venture capital. We tokenize its emerging crypto-focused fund, and we also integrate its mobile gaming portfolio companies on our network. And the last one, the most interesting one, is a costume martial arts TV series. It is called Untamed. It's absolutely viral in Asia right now. It has 8 billion views on Netflix and WeTV. So what we did is we tokenized its worldwide fan meetups and concert tickets. And we also tokenized the celebrity merch online marketing place. So that is some use cases we'd like to share with you. Yeah, that, that's very exciting. That that's that's really cool. You don't don't hear about that ever. Um, so, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Uh, do you want to maybe talk about how maybe decentralized oracles fit into SpearX and and for some of these these use cases? So, um, like I said, is that we have always been missioning to bring real world data into our SpearX ecosystem so we can connect to traditional non blocking system. And this can finally be realized by integrating uh, the oracle the Chainlink Oracle onto our ecosystem so we can allow our developers to create smart contracts and connect to, to off-chain data fees, APIs, traditional payment infrastructure, and more, which would greatly expand the number of use cases we can build solutions through DeFi and other large markets. Um, like I said, before Chainlink, the smart contracts were largely limited to only processing on-chain data, which most of which is generated by blockchain itself. So this, this connection from interacting with external data, off-chain data, resulted in blockchain development focus around creating tokens and tracking ownership. And oracles are middleware that provide smart contracts with external connection. However, most Oracle solutions have been centralized, opaque, and or don't provide access to credential um, APIs at all. So this impedes developers from building truly decentralized applications or introduce unknown security through obscurity risk or just prevents connection to traditional data and enterprise infrastructure. So that is why we want to work with Chainlink because Chainlink is a decentralized, truly decentralized Oracle network that allows blockchain applications to import option data to use as contract inputs, as well as expert data outputs to external system, both in a highly secure and reliable manner. It provides us several advantages uh, features to our developers, which will allow them to first um, incorporate decentralization of both the Oracle mechanism and the data source to ensure data is delivered in a highly available manner that is resistant to manipulation. And the second role is, is connected to high quality data and permissioned backend system through their external adaptive technology to provide a wider access to key data resources and enterprise systems. Third of all is that we can utilize a large collection of security reviewed um, civil resistant node operators for Oracle services instead of provisioning our own from scratch. And the last one is to build the stronger security guarantees for the integrity of data through Chainlink's upcoming service agreement framework and TLS solution town crier. So that is some real specific details regarding um, what Chainlink can enable us to do. Um, we can totally expand into that, but we can stop here for now for next question, maybe. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Dot, for sharing. Uh, it, it's been a pleasure working with both of you and, and your team, and we're really excited uh, for the integration. Uh, I think oh, we got a few minutes left for a couple more questions. Uh, Joe, I'm just curious, uh, mm -hmm. what, what are you excited about uh, within, you know, just the blockchain and cryptocurrency space right now? And where do you see it in, in five years? Uh, um, that's a big question, <laughs> but a very good one. Like everyone's like talking about like uh, when the future will come, right? And uh, currently, I think the most popular uh, topic is DeFi uh, for sure. Uh, like we can see many uh, interesting projects like from Compound, Balancer, Synthetics, and also like when you uh, look at the data, 
like the total value locked, uh, like since this June is like from one billion uh, US dollars till now is four point five million dollar a uh, billion dollars, which is just crazy. Like in only two months, it's like more than twofold, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, there's a big problem is like um, there's so many money, so many um, heat, so many interest uh, in the DeFi space. Um, but uh, we can say the speed, I mean, the, like like the gas fee and also the, uh, we have to wait a long time now <laughs> for uh, each transaction. So there, we can say clearly there is a technology uh, drawback here or like a, still we need to do something in technology to uh, fully realize the potentiality of DeFi and blockchain in general. So that's what we are working on. We try to provide a like new generation blockchain to like uh, can be really used uh, by everyone. We try to bridge uh, the gap between the traditional financial world uh, to the new blockchain space. Like from our daily life, everybody's daily life uh, to the fancy blockchain life. Uh, yeah, so I, I would say in five years, people will definitely see a great progress in both the infrastructure and the projects uh, built up on those infrastructure. And this industry are getting mature uh, for sure, uh, one, one year and uh, like year by year. So yeah, uh, I'm very excited to see what will like um, come about um, before the end of this year. Um, I'm pretty sure there will be very interesting DeFi project and also maybe very interesting infrastructure comes up. I think one thing I uh, read recently is called the Anchor. Uh, yeah, it's a DeFi project, really interesting. They want to have a true passive income source uh, on the blockchain and they think it will be a big, um, like a uh, big, uh, how can I say? I attraction to the normal user because they don't need to do anything. They just buy tokens and put their token, stake their token on the DeFi project. <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll see what will come next. And I'm very excited to see um, the next uh, like um, big boom of blockchain. <laughs> yeah, very exciting times times ahead. How about you, Frida? What, what are you most excited about? I'm most excited about um, not probably not in five years, but I'm most excited about for the rest of this year because uh, Sprex is gonna launch, we're gonna make some really major announcements besides from this integration with Chainlink. We're gonna have our own sale and we're gonna launch our testnet. Mainnet is gonna be listed by a major US-based uh, exchange. So I'm not thinking too far ahead because blockchain space kind of, you know, change all the time. It's too whimsical to actually predict what's gonna go on. So I. I'm the type of person who likes to focus what's going to happen um, next, like one step ahead, instead of looking like looking way ahead of what we're doing right now. So be more focused on the present, maybe, and just do one thing at a time. Especially yeah, that, that's Rex, this is such a nascent, such a young foundation. It is led by a really young team. We don't want to be we don't want to be the big talker. We want to walk the talk. Amazing. Yeah, it's really exciting and thing, things definitely move very fast in, in blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, is there anything else that maybe we, we left out? I know you just touched upon some stuff that, that you want to um, tell the audience and where, where can people follow your progress? Uh, we can. We are so excited to announce our new website is finally live now. It's sparex.io. It's extremely cool. I recommend everybody just to click in and just scroll over whenever you're free. Just enjoy how amazing design is. And the second one is that you can follow spa.spirax.io to follow our public sale. And second, a third of all is that um, please follow us on Twitter and also join the Telegram chat, just like what you all do to the rest of the blockchain plot, uh, projects to learn more about us. Um, we are a really fun group of people that you probably don't mind to be friend with. <laughs> and what else is that, um, like we introduced at the beginning of this, life is that we are a very technology oriented team um, and our latest people just got admitted to IAE um, conference which I believe that Joe can probably walk us through a little bit about the details. Oh uh, yeah I can 
talk a little bit about it. Yeah, just very briefly. Uh, so like our uh, consensus protocol called BDLS, uh, it is written in a paper first, uh, it's an academic work first. So we submit this academic work, uh, BDLS consensus protocol uh, to like uh, one of the top computer science com uh, conferences here. Like uh, it's called a IEEE Infocom. Uh, and, uh, and we are very happy like early this year, it is like, um, after peer review, it is uh, approved by the conference and is and is published. And also, I'm very lucky to be the main pre uh, to be the main presenter of this paper. Uh, I uh, like I had planned to go to Canada, Toronto, to present this like uh, like pre to do this presentation. But uh, I mean, pandemic, so I have to stay stay at home, do a virtual one. But uh, still, it's very exciting. Uh, you can check it out like on our website. Congratulations. That's huge. That, that's really yeah, exciting. Thank you. Thank I'll you. make sure to drop all these links in, into, into the description. And yeah, really excited to take a look at that paper myself. And I'm, I'm sure, sure the audience is. <laughs> yeah. Well. Cool. Well, I think that wraps up our Q&A for today. I really want to thank you both, Frida and Joe, for joining. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And, and it's really interesting to learn a lot more about what you're working on at Spirit X and, and all the progress that, that you guys have accomplished so far and, and your plans going forward in the future. Again, I'll drop all the links into the description uh, so that everyone can, can follow Spirit X's progress. And uh, if you have questions, definitely join both of our channels and we'll be able to, to help uh, answer those questions. Otherwise, uh, thank you again. Uh, very grateful for your time and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for moderating. Thank you. Thank you, have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.